you ever hear the term, you are a product of what you eat, guess what? We have Alyssa Goodman, holistic nutritionist, going deep into what are the things that you need to be eating to have the best product, i.e. your healthiest, highest, most abundant self. She goes into things like juicing, detoxification, what we should be staying away from, easy stuff, cheap stuff, cheap interventions to make us be our healthiest self. Check it out. Let's get into this. So what do you in attribute this internal glowing, this, this true exuberance of health? What does it look like? Well, it looks, I mean, I have always, I grew up not feeling so well and like sort of behind the eight ball and mentally fatigued and low energy. So I think I was striving to find some type of peace and energy as well and just trying to find some like calm in my life. And I feel like that is what contributes to the glow. It's that inner peace. It's that self-love. Mm -hmm. And I didn't find it till four years ago. So I was 58 when I found it. It was very late. I hope people don't wait till they're 58 to find it. But mm -hmm. the calm, the peace, you know, the energy all in one just is the, it's intoxicating. Mm. So how does bringing more peace to your mental, your emotional self, how does bringing more peace create more energy for you throughout the day? I mean, the part about just like calming down your central nervous system and actually being in more of a parasympathetic nervous system, let like rest and digest and being centered and, you know, just it basically, you don't exert as much energy because when you're in fight or flight mode, which I lived in all my life, you're exerting energy like crazy. So I feel like you, you can serve and reserve energy for yourself mm -hmm. when you're more present, when you're more calm, when you're more peaceful. You know, we all know that that fight or flight mode and that you telling yourself you're, you should do more, you should be better, all those things. It's such a detriment, mm -hmm. you know? It downregulates your immune system, it turns on inflammatory genes, all of that stuff. So I feel like that's really the ticket. Yeah, and you know, we convince ourselves that this is our story so early on yeah. that it sponsors the rest of our life. Yes. You know, 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're in just a sympathetic dominant mode. And here's the most beautiful part, we adapt to it. Right. So it's like, we, it's, it's the most beautiful thing that human beings do. We adapt to a new, center. Yeah. And that's our center when we're completely in that sympathetic. Right. How how much does a sympathetic dominance push something like cancer in someone? I think it's huge. I think that whole, you know, like mental attitude that you're not safe or you're not good enough or you know, we all know the first seven years of your life, your subconscious is fully downloaded. And so we kind of replay those first seven years in our subconscious. We were, you know, we operate like what, 95% out of our subconscious. So I feel like that is constantly downregulating the immune system and turning on inflammatory genes. And mm -hmm. I think eventually it just wears you down. Yeah. You know, I, and I think cancer is definitely. I know I was living that way for like many, many years. I was diagnosed at 32, so it was a really early age, but those first 30 years were pretty treacherous. Mm. You know, I had those thoughts. I also labeled myself a sick kid because I was always sick. So I labeled myself sick, I couldn't keep up, you know, I wasn't good enough, all of those things. And I think they all contributed to my cancer, mm. along with the sugar, probably. And the, you know, too much alcohol and right, just fast right, living. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and this is what always piqued my interest because as we were talking about off air, I worked in oncology and the, we have the studies to show, yes, alcohol, tobacco, lack of exercise, right? Poor diet. These are the things that really we know lead to certain things. And, and, right. and for, for some way they're controllable, right? There's yeah. a genetic component. But we don't talk enough about the sponsoring stories, like you said, right? I'm always sick. I'm sick. I'm not good enough, right? The mm -hmm. things that are creating the experience of our nervous system from our subconscious. Yeah. Which is, like you said, inflammatory yeah. genes, right? We have uh, the immune system, all the things that are being affected by this. Yeah. So your digestion. Your I, digestion, yeah. everything. Okay, right. so you had this fast life yep. up until 30. Mm -hmm. And what... What was the gift of that cancer journey for you? 
It was a huge gift. Well, first of all, I was getting a massage sitting upright like we are, and the masseuse was massaging my neck and shoulders. She felt a lymph node on my collarbone. So like, she was like, hey, you're not supposed to have a swollen lymph node on your collarbone. Go get that checked out. But I was tired and didn't feel good all the time, so I would not have known it was cancer or that I had something going on. Got it checked out, and it was cancer. Then I saw three doctors, and one of the three, two of the doctors totally freaked me out about whole, you know, possibility of dying from an early stage, which was really crazy. Um, and then I had to do chemo, radiation, freeze my eggs, you know, who's going to be my donor, all this stuff. And it was like completely freaked out. And then one doctor says to me at St. John's in Santa Monica, I said, hey, are you happy? Do you love your life? Um, are you passionate about what you do? Do you love your husband? You know, what's going on in your world? Are you stressed? Like, and I just burst into tears and I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know what happy is. Or I don't even, he said, are you, you know, do you have a sense of calm too? And I'm like, that was 30 years ago. That was so ahead of his time. I think, I mean, we fast forward, yeah. doctors still don't do that. But um, I, that was life changing. I went into therapy you know, I started reading every self-help book. I started doing yoga. I started meditating. Um, you know, I just really got my head back together. And it was it was like, that was what was life-changing for me, wow. was the emotional, mental part. Yes, I changed my diet, but I'd already, I grew up with a mom who was a little bit healthy, went to Rancho La Puerta mm -hmm. in Tecate, Mexico. I don't know if you know where that is, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the border. It was the first of its kind health ranch where people would go for seven days and um, hike and eat plant-based yeah. and so massages and all that stuff and yoga and meditation. So I would go with her when I was a teenager, which I hated at, at the time. But I already knew about a little bit of that, but I didn't, the mental part, I didn't know. And that was, that doctor changed my life. Now, according to a study published in the academic press, magnesium deficiency is a leading cause of sleep disruption in both children and adults. It might be you. If I wake up exhausted, you know that it ruins my whole productivity for the whole day. It's a cycle because then it's taking me longer to fall asleep, I'm more stressed out, and I end up being exhausted the next day and you know, onward and onward. So we need magnesium. Really, really, really do. Most of us about 75% of us are not even getting enough magnesium. Now, recent studies have shown that there are actually seven different forms of magnesium that our bodies need in precise ratio to keep the right balance for better sleep. There's only one magnesium supplement on the market that has the full spectrum of all seven forms, and it's called Magnesium Breakthrough. Now, I gotta tell you, when I take this stuff, it feels good. I take it every single night, two before bed, and I'm waking up and I'm going to the bathroom smoothly. My brain is good, my body's good. If I'm working out really hard, I take another one to make sure that my muscles are not sore. But it's kept me regular, it's kept me neurologically good, it's kept my muscles good. My body is getting exactly what it needs via this fantastic magnesium supplement. It's the only one that I recommend. At this point, the best one that I found. So don't miss out on the most relaxing sleep ever with Magnesium Breakthrough. For an exclusive offer for you, the Heal That Stuff listener, Go to magbreakthrough.com slash DRG and use the promo code DRG10 during checkout to save 10%. Again, just go to magbreakthrough.com slash DRG and use the code DRG10 to get 10% off. Do not miss it. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink with everything you need and all the crap that you don't. That means all the salt you need and none of the sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, the electrolytes that you need. No sugar, no artificial coloring, no artificial flavors, gluten, or fillers. Now, Element is formulated to help everyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited for your lifestyle, whether it's keto, low-carb, paleo, doesn't matter. It's super important to replenish your electrolytes. You know this. When you're sweating and you get cramps and you get brain fog and you're exhausted, that's because you are low on electrolytes. But you also get things like headaches, fatigue, sleeplessness. You want to make sure you're replacing and replenishing electrolytes. But it's not only when you sweat, it's also when you just wake up. So optimal hydration is about balance, specifically the right fluid electrolyte balance. Now that summer's here, it brings warmth and sunshine. You're gonna be sweating, you know that. And this is why balance is the key. Elements grapefruit salt has returned for the summer and it is my favorite flavor. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that is the best one. And that might be controversial because a lot of you like the other flavors, the watermelons, the citrus ones, the orange ones. No, no, no. 
Grapefruit for me is my favorite. So go check that one out. Right now, Element is offering you, the Heal Thyself listeners, free sample packs with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. It's a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with any friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash DRG. The deal is only available through my link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K. Elementy.com slash DRG. They offer no question asked refund. Totally risk-free. And if you don't like it, you get your money back. No questions asked. You got nothing to lose. Yeah, huge so, piece, right? Because mm-hmm. it was like your life was on one trajectory. Yep. And and adding in just reading more books, going to therapy, doing your present moment exercises, yeah, yeah. completely started shifting everything. So, yeah. so after that, you know, one thing that stuck out was when your uh, doctor said, "Do you are you living in your passion?" Yeah. What what changed as far as passion and purpose after that? Well, at the time, I was trying to get pregnant, so I. I thought my passion was to have kids, and, yeah. and and it is. I have two girls now that are really fabulous in my life. Um, I think that I, you know, I I went on to get to get pregnant, and then I my passion was to give back to the community. I did a lot of like uh, philanthropic work, and then I also did a lot of work for this their school. So I loved that. I absolutely, I love people. I love you know helping out all of that. So I did that for years until my husband was diagnosed with cancer at 43 and a half. And then his cancer was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is really in those days, it was a little odd to have two you know, people in the same household getting cancer and a similar cancer, lymphatic cancer. And he had a year and a half battle and died at 45 mm. of fungal pneumonia. So he didn't go the same direction I did. I think cancer really terrified him. So it was, you know, then my passion came to trying to help him save him, heal him. Um, But he went the Western route and did not do anything holistic. He tried, but I think the whole idea of the cancer, he was terrified it was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And And I think that, yeah. yeah. And and talking about, the the, for me, it's the integrative piece is so important, Mm -hmm. right? There there is the value in both. Uh, And when I worked in the hospital, (laughs) the people who went and, and elected for naturopathic care down their route of chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, they were exponentially better. Yeah. They would, I mean, less gut issues, less neuropathy, their skin looked better, mm-hmm. less hair loss, more energy. And it was, I was like, wait a minute, why isn't this help being put in every single hospital across the country? I know. It's it's essential because I've seen, you know, my mom had breast cancer. I've seen what it does if you just go Western route yeah. without any integrative help and support, yeah. it beats you up. You know, totally. And we see it and we see it. So yeah. I, I, I know what that looks like. I mean, one of my favorite books, you probably read it, Radical Remission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was one of the first books I read. Yeah, Kelly Turner. I love both her books, Radical Hope, Radical Remission. Mm-hmm. I mean, that kind of sums it up. Yeah. Really. And for everyone who is viewing and listening, go check out Radical Remission as a book for you just to read with general knowledge. Right. But if someone has cancer that you love, send it to them. You read it. It's really powerful because... Essentially, she was a statistician, I believe, in Stanford or something like that. Yeah, she was doing her PhD. PhD, and she has all of this data on on patients with cancer, like thousands of people. Right. And she basically put her top seven or ten list of uh, what are the really big things that are pushing cancer. And so many of them are psychological, mental, emotional. And and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten, exactly. (laughs) That's right. This is a huge piece of the pie. Yeah. And that, that was really what you know, had changed my perspective on right, what cancer right. is. So I just, I love all the modalities out today yeah. too for all these health issues and for cancer and for the emotional component. I mean, yeah. you know, just, we talked a teeny bit about plant medicine. I mean, plant medicine is changing people's lives, you know, even with cancer mm-hmm. um, in terms of being able to like really, you know, not be afraid of what's happening to them or seeing that they are going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, to that be able to is, exhale. That is one of the most, I, my dream is that every hospital uh, opens the space to allow people an end of life to have oh, yeah. a plant medicine ceremony. Yeah. Because in, in, in four or five hours, their experience with death will completely change. Exactly. It is one of the most healing things 
in the world. Yeah. In the world. And, I and agree. if you do it in the right <laughs> set and setting, it can change someone's life. Yeah. How did how did something like a plant medicine ceremony, which or plant medicine in general, how has that helped change your perspective on things? So after the cancer, because I was radiated up to my upper mantle, yeah. I got I got a Hashimoto's and I got hypothyroidism. And then I also got celiac. So I got a lot of health issues, anxiety, sleep issues after all of that radiation and treatment. Um, so and then, year, so I went on medicine and years went by trying to heal all that stuff. And basically I ended up um, getting insomnia about four years ago. And I did everything I knew how to do in terms of all the holistic things. And, you know, I did meditation, I worked out, I just, I had a good sleep regime um, and I couldn't figure, I couldn't get myself to sleep. I felt like I was in this, you know, I had burned myself out. I had like gone to the wall yeah. um, because I was working really hard and I love what I did, but I was overdoing it. Again, I was like over, like, Try thinking that it wasn't enough, like you, like I was before when I was diagnosed with cancer. So, I did a, a plant medicine journey, and I could see on the journey that like I, everything was going to be okay. I could relax. I could definitely. My girls are going to be okay because that's also something I worried about with all of this stuff, all the health issues in our family. So, I saw I saw it on the on the plant medicine journey that. I had to stop calling myself sick and like, you know, I was healthy, I was strong, I could exhale and my life was gonna be great. Like I could see all of that and I, I could feel it visually. Like I just felt it in my body and um, it was the most incredible experience to be able to feel for the first time to relax. Yeah, yeah. To fully exhale and relax and be like, oh, the universe has my back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm protected. And I, that doesn't mean I, I have gotten health issues since then, but I still can go back to that feeling, um, the feeling I never had in my entire life that, that I was going to be okay. Yeah, there's a one thing that comes across for most people once they surrender to the yeah. experience, because if there's no surrender, there's a lot of resistance, and there's a lot of resistance. It's It gets a little gloomy for you if yes. you're doing it. Yes. But once you surrender, the the main string that I see that ties so much in is like, whoa, okay, like I'm okay. Like yeah. everything's okay. Mm -hmm. There's a benevolence of like the universe that has got me yeah. or I'm taken care of. Yeah. And that's how everyone comes out. They're like, right. oh, everything's okay. Yeah. You're right? right. Wow. Even if like this is happening and yeah. it's a really shitty situation, yeah. everything is okay. Yeah. So as it we, puts it in perspective. In perspective. And you feel a sense of safety. Yeah. Like a lot of people just don't feel safe. Yeah, exactly. In their universe or in their body or in their world. Yeah. And it's a matter of like that trust and surrender. So this is this is why I'll check in every few months and go, okay, do I need, oh, how am I feel? Oh, I need to mm -hmm. really be with myself for about five or six hours. Right. I'll come That's out, I'll be beautiful. like, yeah, re-download. <laughs> okay, so I we, love it. We, listen, okay, let's get back to that glow. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> let's get back to the glow. I need the glow. If I 30 years from now, I want the glow. Mm -hmm. 40 years from now, I want the glow. When I'm a great grandfather, I want the glow. <laughs> uh, what are some pieces over your work that have to do with longevity? How do we feel good in our body as we're aging? Yeah, good, great question. Because it gets, it's simple things. So the way that I function, you know, I, we have an epidemic of dehydration going on. So we're fully dehydrated. We're just drinking all this beautiful water, but we're just peeing it out. So we're not absorbing it. So I think like getting yourself fully hydrated, um, you know, minerals are really crucial for hydration, not just sodium, magnesium, manganese, potassium, you know, all of those things. So I just, I have a hydrating powder that I love. I see you have one over here, but I love this one called Ultima Replenisher. Yeah, nice. And it's a lifesaver. I've been drinking it for 10 years. It's like full of minerals. You know, it just gives you brain, it gives your brain better functioning. Like you also feel more energy. Um, it also helps with, you know, keeping you regular. It just, and also I think it helps, it definitely helps with your skin. Yeah. You know, the maintaining of hydration and it helps, you know, your gut and all of that. Um, I think hydration is crucial. I also am a huge juicer. So I was started juicing when I was 32 and it was Beverly Hills Juice was the first juice place in LA. 
um, on Beverly, and I started juicing then, and I've been juicing sort of off and on ever since. So I have a green juice almost every morning, mm. like cucumber, celery, lemon, ginger, um, and it's just so hydrating. It's full of minerals, helps lower inflammation, you know, just like it's a beautiful thing, to, and also helps get those veggies into your system. Right. So right. I think that those two things are crucial. That I mean, sleep also. I mean, I'm my sleep regimen now, I'm really, really particular. And I am very bummed when my aura ring goes under 90. Wow, well, 90 is <laughs> a good number. 90, yeah. So um, I'm aiming for over 90, which is which is a little bit, it's a lot to be, you know, have to like strive for that 90. Because 80s is, is, is good too. So I'll just tell you that. I mean, but um, I, my sleep is really important. I get try to get eight hours of sleep. Women need eight to ten hours because we got to replenish our adrenals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that most of us that grew up in those old days, like you know, we don't need that much sleep. I know my parents slept five hours, you know, and they thought more than five was you were lazy. Right, right. So, right. so what are some of your 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 sleep hacks then? What are you doing? So I will I turn off all my electronics or my phone and my computer by seven o'clock. So I'm very wow. religious about that. Also, I would say that I definitely I take magnesium every night. I love bio optim I love bio oh, optimizer yeah, magnesium. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, and then also take a sleep supplement from Genuine Health that does have a little melatonin in it mm-hmm. sometimes, but um, it has reishi and um, GABA, um, L-theanine, all mm-hmm. those. Great, yeah, I love all of that. So I definitely, um, I also just do a lot of journaling before I go to bed about maybe things that are bugging me for the day. So I get them out of my subconscious um, and also journal about the things that I'm really grateful for so I can go to sleep and just really, again, exhale. Um, Those are some of the important things. I think I get to bed by 10 every night. So that's, yeah. That's why I, you're hitting those 90s. Right. That's why I'm hitting the 90s. 10 to 2 is like that important hours Um, so I'm definitely like, I just, and I try to get, I try to not stress myself out through the day. I think this is a big one. I feel like we get our cortisol and our adrenaline going through the day. And then all of a sudden at night, we're like, oh shit, we gotta, you know, it's gotta get back to, we gotta get ourselves calm again. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, um, I try like throughout the day to not be so stressed, go for a walk. Like I am very much into adaptogens. So I love um, more holy basil and lion's mane and, you know, things like that, that I take throughout the day to make t- make sure my cortisol and adrenaline are bal- more balanced. Mm. So I don't get caught like I did years ago when I was couldn't get myself relaxed. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And, and in that and in that cycle. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty impressive that you turn off everything at seven o'clock. You know. That, that's nice and early. Right. So, so right. for those three hours, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you're, I'm assuming your lights are dim, yes. right? You're, you're calming yourself down. When, when do you stop eating dinner? Seven. Okay, so all right. So right yeah. after dinner, everything right. goes off. Right. So for those three hours before you get into bed and journal, are you doing any practices, any light yoga, any any breathing, any meditation? Is there anything that's integrated in your night routine? I mean, I should be. I would love to do that. But I just am really, I do watch TV. So I guess that there is a little of that. Like yeah. Netflix is definitely there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Listen, that's how I turn off my brain every right, day. Right, that's how I turn off my brain. So yeah. um, I, when I'm really stressed, I'll do those practices. You know, I'll do a little light yoga, a little stretching, mm-hmm. um, Epsom salt bath. Things yeah, like that. that. That's a nice. Those Epsom salt baths right. are really powerful. I've, I find that they help a lot of people yeah. who have trouble winding down yeah. for sleep. Right. Um, okay, so then look, let's see, you wake up. How about that? And you wake up in the morning. What do you do in the morning before you even turn on your phone or, or you get going? Yeah, my phone is not even in my room. So you don't put it in your room. Thank God. That was, Has that helped? That I love that. So it's in a different room. So like, and I don't really feel drawn to go, you know, get it, which is wild. Because I think when the years ago when I had the insomnia, it was in my next to my bed, and it was with me all the time. So it's I just like kind of like hang out. I when I get up, I tell everybody you have to drink two cups of water because your body's been detoxing mm-hmm. through the night and cleansing. You know, so you got to rehydrate before coffee. 
coffee or tea or even food or, or you know, if you're taking medication too. So I drink two, two cups of water is like life changing for some people because yeah. they're so dehydrated. Yeah. So I do that, take my supplements. I do take a lot of supplements. So I'm into, I love, uh, I love like, supplements. yes, yeah, like all the nutrients that I'm deficient in. And I started taking a thyroid supplement years ago. I went off my thyroid medication four years ago and started a uh, one from New Zealand. It's a bovine thyroid mm-hmm. supplement that has been life changing for me. Like thyroid numbers were perfect with this. So I take a lot of supplements. Um, I definitely am into, I love coffee. So I'll have a cup of coffee and then I'll like check my phone. And that, so, so after all of that, so mm-hmm. how, after you wake up until you open up your phone, how, how long is that? I, I would say it's like a good hour. A good hour. Yeah. And how do you wake up if you need an alarm? Um, I just wake up automatically. So. You do? Yeah, because of going to bed at 10 or 11 at the latest. Right, you're going to be up early. Yeah. Okay. I definitely get up, you know, on my own, so. So when you're on your phone, how do you not, because you have a, a following, right? There's a lot of people who are asking you questions and DMing <laughs> you, or how do you just not get sucked into social media over and over and over? That is a very good question. I have a really good assistant that does that for me. Oh, okay. Because, like, That's I, why I've been talking to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be, like, sucked into that. Yeah. That is, like, a vortex that I have been sucked into four years ago when I had the insomnia, and it was destroying me. Yeah. yeah. And it still is hard. I always say, oh, I wish I didn't have to do the social media part. Yeah. You know, it's hard work. It is. It is. It definitely, like, being on there daily, stories or or feed, it's just, it's a lot of work. And it's for everyone, regardless yeah. of if you're influencing, if yeah. you have a, a, a information page, if you're just, you know, going on there throughout the day, just checking up on stories, checking up on your friends, right. regardless, it still has the same effect. It does. And it I, does. I find, not a love-hate, because there's a lot of gifts that come from it, but yeah. but I, big boundaries. I have to put big boundaries, mm-hmm. because if I don't, it's very easy to get sucked in and just yeah. be there. So uh, that's one of the big things I tell people is we don't know yet the effect of social mm-hmm. media. Mm-hmm. Maybe in the next 10 years, we're going to know what it does to our brains. Yeah, I'm not looking be... forward to that result. Yeah. yeah, I'm not looking forward to it either. <laughs> not, not at all. You know, because even I know better, like at my age and everything, you know, not to compare, not to like, you know, get sucked into all of that. Yeah. Um, but I still do. So I can imagine as a younger person that doesn't really know better, yeah. um, that it is really hard to keep up with all of that. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I mean, I do, I, love being on there to give information and to help people. Yeah. I don't call my I don't consider myself an influencer at all. I don't right. I don't even want to be an influencer. I just want to help people. Yeah. That's always been the goal. You know, I just whatever I can do, little or big, um, I just want to be able to if I can even with the cleanse, feed them. I right. most of those people that do eat my food and take the cleanse, I never even meet. Right. It's so wild. Yeah. But yeah. I will hear from a little bit, you know, you changed my life with the food and I could reset my body in five days Mm -hmm. with your food. So Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing to be able to just be able to, you know, get out there and just give back. To give back, yeah. Yeah. And and I think that that's a big uh, sense of purpose for everyone on some level. And this is why I do believe a lot of people are so unhappy is because what they're dedicating their time to, to get a paycheck, is not giving back to people. Yeah. Truly giving back in a way that is heart-centric. Yeah. So... We, I think, intuitively and inherently know this, mm-hmm. even if it's so subtle. We go through these days where we're in a place where we're working for someone else that isn't really having a major impact on humanity, right? Right? That is really just turning on a, pro- a profit focused. And that's not part of our DNA. Right. Part of our DNA is actually communal, being able to uplift and help people rise up. So right. for me, it's like, I wonder what the world would be like if everyone had permission to just be in their sense of purpose, utilizing their gifts for the greater good. Oh, it would be different. We'd be living right. in a new utopia. Right. You know, right. we'd be, we'd be see be waterfalls and butterflies <laughs> and people dancing around, and I'd be like, wow, this is a utopia, right. huh? Yeah. So that's part of, you know, the, the things that maybe we can remind people of doing just by us being us. And, yeah. and that's, that's, that's a beautiful gift, and I see yeah. that in you. I try to, like, with the women that I talk to every day, I do ask them, you know, do you love yourself? That's, mm. And that's a big one, too. You know, not the passion is one thing, but loving themselves is another. So everyone says no. What does that feel like? What's that? What? Love myself? Like, that's selfish. Mm-hmm. I find that so 
astonishing like that they don't they haven't even been taught like to really care for themselves or honor who they are first and foremost yeah. they're never going to find their passion unless they have that first right, right? right. All right, listen, y'all. I got to tell you something that I've been doing for about maybe three, four months now. It's a little secret. It's Neurohacker's Brain Fuel Formula, the quality of mind, and it's for long-term brain health. I noticed a difference in just a few days. I took it this morning. I take it definitely before every podcast. That I can't miss. Actually, I got to keep it here in the studio. That's a good idea. It improves my focus, my mood, my memory, and willpower to just get things done. I don't take a lot of supplements, although if you see my supplement cabinet, there's maybe a hundred supplements in there. I have the top level of my cabinet with three to six supplements, and those are the ones I take daily. This is one of them. Transforming willpower and productivity can in turn transform tons of life habits for the better. You get your workouts done, better job performance, you're reaching your life goals. Now, Neurohacker combines 28 of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on earth and ultimate brain fuel formulas, quality of mind, and it's been changing people's lives for years, for sure. This formula is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in each ingredient on overall mental clarity. It's also backed by 100-day money-back guarantee, so you have almost three months to try Quality Mind at no financial risk, and then you decide for yourself. So go check out yourself what the best brain formula on earth is gonna do for your mind. Go to neurohacker.com slash DRG, and as a Heal Thyself listener, you got a code DRG at checkout for an extra 15% off of your purchase. That's neurohacker.com slash DRG, and try Quality of Mind with the code DRG to experience life-changing mental performance. All right, 70 million Americans you know have chronic sleep issues and 50% of Americans deal with sleep deprivation. That might be you. Statistically speaking, one in two of you. You probably dealt with this at some point in your life, and I know how difficult it can be. One of our favorite brands here at Heal Thyself, really since the get-go, Ned has been here, has created an incredible new product. It's called Shut Eye Chai. It's inspired by 5,000 years of ancient traditional healing and is Ned's biggest product launch to date. It's the Mellow Super Blend Latte for sleep, and it combines adaptogens, aminos, functional mushrooms, and magnesium. Seriously, the best ingredients out there. And it's wrapped in a heavenly masala chai inspired spice body. Now, it doesn't just get you an amazing sleep, but it's got things like chaga, reishi, ashwagandha that are deeply nourishing to the body, so you're getting all the additional benefits. Now, Shut Eye Chai will help calm your nervous system, nourish your senses, and send you peacefully into dreamland. The way that I do it, I finish my dinner, wait a few hours until my stomach is really settled, I feel fully digested, at peace, and about 40 minutes before my night rituals, I warm this up, I, I let it cool down a little and I start sipping on it, right? So once I'm done, then I'm doing about an hour, hour and 10 minutes of whatever it is to shut down, wind down, to really get my nervous system relaxed. And guess what? This is the catalyst for it. It's all natural, made exclusively from botanicals, fungi, herbs, plants, minerals, roots, and spices. Now, Ned is fully transparent. And this is why they've been on the show and a longtime sponsor, because they share their third-party testing, who farms their products, the extraction process, but also heavy metals, pesticides, all the nasty things we want to stay away from. Now, Shut Eye Chai, contains no CBD, caffeine, melatonin, or dairy. With Shut Eye Chai, you'll find yourself getting a better sleep, faster to sleep, and a deeper sleep. And if you have one of the trackers, check and test it for yourself and see if your sleep is better with it. Now discover how Shut Eye Chai can revolutionize your sleep. Get 15% off with the code DRG. Go to helloned.com slash DRG. Enter the code DRG at checkout. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash DRG to get 15% off and the sweetest of sweetest dreams. What does that mean for you? How does that, how does your I love myself statement look? I I mean the thing is the loving my figuring out how to love myself really did give me that exhale. Like the idea that I'm not perfect, that I don't do everything right, that you know, things are going to happen in my life that aren't going to be great, all that stuff. Um but I still really honor, you know, what I do and who I am as a person. Um I don't know. I just feel I was brought up that that was selfish, like yeah. to 
So that was a hard one for me to grasp. But once I did grasp it, you know, everything changed for me with my friends, with my family, with my, you know, my health overall. Yeah. You know, things got better um, and things healed faster and better. And then also with my clients too, just the idea, you know, being able to teach them how to love themselves and not think it's selfish. And then it's like, wow, like my whole world can change. Yeah, yeah. You know, things that I really want to manifest are going to happen because you're really in your power. 100%. Not in a big power, you know, power, yeah. but a really beautiful power. For sure. You're going from that inward expression to the outward experience, right? right? right. And, and when I hear the perfection piece, this is a piece that I find uh, I work with a lot of women, right? When right. doing emotional healing. Right. And when I work with them, I can tell the moment they walk in, I go, oh, there's this, I know that there's perfection. That's the compensation of perfection. And then they Could sit down. Could you tell that with me? Yeah, no, 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 I couldn't. No, <laughs> oh, because shocking. there's a lot more ease to you. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. but I, but I Still have that. felt that, right? And the perfection is, is so tough on the system. Yeah. Because imagine living, everything you do, will never be good enough. No. Imagine the signal to the cells, to the nervous system, that is like, okay, let's push it higher and push it more and push it more, mm -hmm. right? Until we are good enough. And you're chasing this hamster wheel. So what I find oftentimes is that uh, there's a, a wound that comes from the mother mm -hmm. uh, for the women who are living in their perfection. Yeah. And, that, and that mother wound is perpetuated into the daughter into living in perfection. Yeah. So breaking that generational piece changes forever. It's like these women that I've seen, they come back, they're just like, ah, well, I'm here. And I'm almost like, wow, okay, you're just, you're wearing different clothes, first of all. Are you wearing more of what you want to wear? Right. Yeah, I'm wearing more of what I want to wear. Yeah. Your posture isn't so upright, yeah. right? You're not standing so like, it's stiff. like a, like a little, yeah, stiff, yeah. like a little string, on, like being mm -hmm. hung on an ornament or something. Yeah. And that ease is this, just there. But I noticed well, more ease from you. It's the yeah. greatest gift I could give my girls. You know, like I grew up with the other side. Right. Yeah. My mom still is striving for perfection. So right. I, but I didn't want that for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my, and to have two girls and raise them in LA, private school, the whole thing is hard enough. Yeah. But then to have the perfectionism yeah. on them as well, it's a work in progress, but I definitely wanted to break that yeah, cycle. Yeah, and that's a generational. So yeah. I, what I always encourage people to take a moment if you have kids or if you plan on having kids, yeah. even better, right? You, you have, you're a few steps back, but if you have kids, take a moment and go, it's funny, there's always a moment where they go, oh my God, I just became my dad or I just became my mom, <laughs> right. Right? right? Or the parts of them that that you know were wounded. Yeah. And, and taking a moment and going, okay, well, can I allow myself to be something different? Can I allow yeah. my children to be free children? Yeah. To really have their own experience, even if I know when I went through that, it was tough. Let yeah. the children experience that, right? And yeah. have their own experience with that. It's like it's having a free child is, is I don't have yeah. children yet, but I, I have an idea about how I want to open up the space It's pretty that. cool that you you know about that and you're doing it before you have children because yeah. I didn't do that. I kind of screwed them up early. No, but now but I'm trying to unwind it. Yeah, but, that, but, it, but, it, but the gift is that you can. Yeah. And this is what True, I tell parents. That if, even if you have kids yeah. who are 10, 11, I work with people who have kids 19, 20 years old. Yeah. And, and it's, it's more about the you that you are being the yeah. more expansive view that allows the children to be like, whoa, like mom's different now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe I can be like that because I really look up to her, even right. though I scream at her because right. I'm a teenager, right? Yeah. There's yeah. still that there, but. Yeah, my husband and I grew up with very type A, very, you know, very perfectionism yeah. parents. And I, I know that contributed to our like uptightness and also mm -hmm. us getting a disease. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. Listen, there ain't no studies on type A equals lymphoma. There's right. no studies on that. But I truly believe that that yeah. stress on the nervous system affects the immune system, totally. affects the rest of the body. Yeah. So so w w we're talking about your, your day, because I really, I'm still interested <laughs> in this. We didn't finish. Okay. What about movement, exercise, yeah, right. sweating? Are you doing this daily? Are you doing this often? So that, so I'm really good at more of the meditation, the calm, the sleep, the food, all of that. I'm not the best with the exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I keep having to go to my hypnotist to get my brain wrapped around because when I was like 14, my mom had me at the gym. So she said I was fat and had me working out, mm -hmm. and I was and. So I just have this feeling of working out. I was like, oh, I'm fat. I got to work out. That's still that correlation. I do walk. I do yoga. Um, I'm not doing enough of that part of the equation. Mm. Like I 
have to be honest about but, that. But I, but, I, but I love this because look, it, it's oftentimes people will look on social media and go, yeah. I have to have a life like that. That's mm -hmm. healthy, right? Yeah. But, but being candid and being like, hey, listen, I don't make it. For me, I want to go to the gym minimum three times a week. Sometimes I make it two and I have to do push-ups in my living room, mm -hmm. you know? Right. It, it, it just happens. Yeah. But, but, I, but what, I, what I heard from you is you're always still making sure you're going for walks. Yes. Moving the body. Yeah, moving the body. Which is essential. Yeah, yeah. But I need to do more. Definitely need to do more of right, that right, part. Right, right, right. I'm so conscious of the others, and they come so easy. Yeah. But the exercise part doesn't come easy for some reason. It, and it, it's interesting that we sometimes we have resistance towards things that we know are good for us, I know. and this is huge for right. so many people. Yeah. Okay. Especially listen. someone my age. Yep. You right. know, as you get older, I right. need to build that muscle and Essential. get resistance yeah. training yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. So we, we we listen. You're known for all this food stuff. Yeah. Now I want to get into the food, <laughs> yes. right? Okay, if I want to live and glow in 30 years from now or 20 years from now and look like you, what food do I need to be eating? What is some of the best foods for longevity, thriving, glowing, feeling good in your body, vitality? I would just, I mean, say, I would say plants. You know, fruits and vegetables are like where it's at. Mm -hmm. um, foods that are grown from the earth, you know, phytonutrients, antioxidants, prebiotics, like all the good stuff, the fiber. Mm -hmm. um, I eat 80% plant-based. So I eat a ton of leafy greens and non-starchy veggies. And then I would say like a quarter starchy veggies and then a quarter protein is sort of my go-to. Wow. Um, and that I think is really what can lower inflammation and you know help with weight, maintaining your weight and also give you that glow, mm -hmm. you know, because it really does give you all the nutrients that you need. Um, I definitely, 20% of me eats animal protein. Mm -hmm. I am an O blood type. So when I had cancer, I became vegan, but I didn't do so well with the vegan lifestyle. I also mm -hmm. probably didn't know what I was doing then as well and all the nutrients that I was deprived in. But right. I feel like I feel so much better and stronger when I eat animal protein. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need those amino acids from the animal protein. Mm -hmm. And I love collagen powder as well to rebuild muscle and tissue, mm -hmm. as I, especially as you age. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just, I love, wherever you are, I love hearing that it's plant-centric. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And, you know, sometimes I get a little bit concerned about people who are eating no plants and just animal products because right. there's that huge diet movement. And I go oh no, this might be a problem. Right. This looks like it's a problem. <laughs> this is going to be a problem. And then lo and behold, we're starting to see, okay, hold on, wait, the, the, too much of this can lead to blank, blank, and blank. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, but plant I try to rotate. You rotate. know, I don't eat a lot of everything. Like, I mean, I eat, I rotate my vegetables. Yeah. But because I do this cleanse, I do have a kitchen that does beautiful salads, five salads for the week and five soups. So I'm a lot of times eating my own food that they're mm -hmm. cooking. So I'm very lucky that I have that at my fingertips. So, so <laughs> I, I got a question for you then. Because there's a lot of busy people who listen to yeah. this show, right? We we got single moms, we got young parents, they got kids, they got to take them here, they got to take them there, and they got to get work done, right? Yeah. Uh, how are we? How what are easy ways to start integrating more of these healthy foods? Is there? I mean, is there a way to put everything together in a day and you know package it up? What are some things that we can do to really get those stews, those salads, right. more plants into our diet? Right. I mean, I personally have been dealing with a lot of clients and I love, am giving them the AG1 greens powder. I don't know mm -hmm. if do you do. I have it. They sponsor yeah. the show. Okay, they do. They're oh, great. they're great. Okay, really yeah, they're like great. Them. So it's like getting those nutrients at a cellular level. A lot of clients are just drinking that in the morning if they're not doing a green juice. Ah. Try to get people to do a green juice. I'm not a smoothie girl, but some of my clients are smoothie. And so I'll have them add vegetables to the smoothie or, or the greens powder. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of really crucial to like have a baseline. Mm -hmm. um, I also love soups. So you can make a bunch of soups on a Sunday for the week or two soups and like mm. maybe not have them as a meal, but have them as a, you know, just like as a multi um, mm. and multivitamin and minerals, you know, yeah. just having a cup of soup with a lot of veggies. I think that's a great way to do it. You can make salads ahead of time. I have a seven day reset on my website. You can download and I have salads and easy soups to prepare for the week. Mm. If you want to add more plant-based foods, but I, but personally, I love like somehow doing like a greens drink in the morning or greens powder or you know I do love the soups because they're really easy to digest. Yeah, anything yeah. to bypass the digestive system and get it into your bloodstream and into your cells. I think right, is right. kind of crucial. That energetic expenditure from yeah. breaking down so much food. 
Yeah. Especially when people are trying to heal from any inflammatory issues in the gut, is going to be important to utilize things that are more gentle, like soups, right. stews, yeah. drinks, broths, whatever it is, it'll be really helpful. So I, I like right. that you have that yeah. accessible. And and it's just a matter of like, can we create the space to meal prep mm -hmm. something? Maybe three hours in this day, but it's going to, although it's a chunk of this day, it's going to take less time throughout the week. Right. And, it, and it's right. it's super accessible. And I love that you say multivitamin, multimineral, because you can... These soups and stews are really powerful, right? right? Yeah. You can put them chock full of everything. That broth is like, you drink it up, you're feeling right. good after. Totally, um, totally. And if you live in LA, which most, a lot of, some of your followers probably don't, but there's so many great places like Erewhon to go to. Right, To right. get great soups, you know, right. to get broths, to get mm -hmm. all the, you know, juices and smoothies. So it's like it's like a Disneyland for people who love healthy food. It is. Right? And <laughs> it's that, become that that soup aisle, although they're outrageously expensive and like creep they're crazy. But I know. The soup refrigerator is beautiful. Right. They're like all these yeah. mason jar glass soups yep. and all the different colors of the rainbow, right? right? You have like broths, you have creamy stuff and you're like I'm just one time I was just standing there and reading about what each one has and it right. was like it was so great. I know. Uh, it's, and their juices, too. All their juices and their smoothies. I mean, they're gorgeous. Yeah. So what I hear from you is that you do a lot of food that's alive and yeah. colorful mm -hmm. and vibrant. You do yeah. the juice. Right. Right. You have the soups and stews, the salad, 80% live food. Yep. I think we figured out the secret. Mm -hmm. Is it eating live food that has energy and vitality equals live food that has energy and vitality in a human being? Absolutely. Okay, there yeah. you go. We could yep. totally end the show right yeah. there. Like, that is <laughs> Even the... if it's cooked, you can put energy into that food, you know? Mm. Especially, you know, when your mom makes used to make food for you, potentially, that was you just loved. Yeah. You know, if her love was in that food, you felt that energy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It tastes nothing like when my mom used to make them. And I don't know what the heck I'm missing. The only right. ingredient is that love, right? Right, right. So yes, you can, yeah. I, I truly believe that, the intentionality behind it. Yeah. How important, and, and this might be a question you never got, how important is it to sit in a table and, and, and eat intentionally with people? Oh, it's so important. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. You know, most people don't do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, to bless your food and to not have any distractions and to really enjoy what you're eating. Um, every bite, that doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could do that more often as well. But yeah. I definitely think that, you know, we should be really honoring and blessing our food. I try to tell the cleansers to do that um, during the five days. Yeah. So... I mean, I know that I honor and bless the cleanse very mm. much to send it out to the people and yeah. with all the love that I have um, and all the good energy and the healing vibes. So I think it's really important if you can do that for yourself when yeah. you're sitting down to eat. And, and, be, and, and if, if you can allow the time in the week, maybe you have friends over. If you have a family, sit with the family. If you have right. a partner, sit with the partner. Right. And really just allow that time to connect over food. You know, we, I, I had uh, Zach Bush was on here and we mm -hmm. were talking and he said the importance of sitting with your family members mm -hmm. or people you love, whoever it is, over food is, is he believes that's what food was designed for, to, yeah. to, to be an expression of communal love. So having that, Absolutely. I always challenge people who view and listen. Let's see if you could do that once a week. Yeah. Get it, gather the crew, sit down at a table, whether it's family or friends, open your heart have conversation, and yeah. fall in love with the people in front of you over and over right. again, right? Right, that's beautiful. What a beautiful, that's beautiful thing. I do that with my fiancé, so we do sit down for dinner. I love it. And we're mostly home, like maybe one or two nights we're not home, but we do sit down and connect and like have a beautiful meal, and yeah. it is crucial. And when the kids all lived at home, we did that too. A lot of times they didn't love it, but um, as time went on, they started to like really look forward to it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So they could relax. So you have... A book that came out, and you have a book that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about both. Which okay. one's the one that came out? What is in it? Cancer Hacks. Mm -hmm. And it really is my story about how I overcame cancer and my husband's story and what we did right and what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's a personal journey of both of our stories. Um, the next book, Pro Aging Hacks, is just really about turning back the biological clock. Um, all the things that I've been able to experience and do. Um, LA is just like loaded with, you know, 
things like the modalities here yeah. are incredible. Um, NAD, ozone, you know, cryo, um, the cold plunge, like ha, sauna, <laughs> everything yeah. is incredible. So, and all this fabulous supplements that are at our fingertips and just also the people, the mm -hmm. wellness community is incredible here. Um, so it's all about all the things that I've done yeah. to experiment, even peptides. I mean, I love it all. I'm an Aries, so like I just like want to devour. The whole what, world. The yes, whole world. <laughs> all of it. I love supplements. I love like figuring out which ones are good and which aren't because it's mm. like such a big business. Right. And, you know, there are few and far between that I think are really high quality and really top notch and good. Um, so I love being able to educate people on that. And um, I think they've changed my life too in a lot of ways. So, and also blood work, just getting to the, you know, core of what's going on with people. You know, why aren't they getting healthy? Why are their antibodies not coming down for their autoimmune issues? And um, that happened to me. Mine weren't zero. They were very close. They were low. So it was considered remission, but my naturopath was like, we need to get them to zero. Yeah. And so she did a stool sample on me, which I hadn't done in years, which I don't love doing. Yeah. Nobody does. And she found out that I had like really bad candida and I don't even eat sugar. Wow. Yeah. So it was kind of wild. So we dealt with that. And, you know, I mean, it's very fun to like really investigate how to get somebody, you know, feeling their ultimate best. I love that. Not just surviving. Yeah, yeah, 100% thriving. Feeling thrive great, in. yeah. When is that out? That, hopefully the end of the year. Okay, great. So. And how do people find you and where's your website and, and where, where, do we, where else do we get you? Definitely on Instagram and uh, my website is alyssagoodman.com. So right. super easy. All right, <laughs> perfect. We did it. Thank you so much for joining the Thank show. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you too.